G'day guys, welcome back. My name is Wildcard. It's Friday night. It's Reds versus the Blues. It's Super Rugby round 13. It's the last game of the season for the Reds at home. And it's the final game at Suncorp for Brad Thorne as the head coach for the Reds. Yeah, uh, disappointing end to the Reds. Kind of like home season, 26 points to 45, down to the Blues. At one point, I thought the Reds was could, could, could have potentially won the game. Could have potentially, you know, pulled out another upset following last week's performance against the Chiefs. And uh, yeah, it wasn't to be sorry. Uh, with about 10 minutes left to go, the Blues conceded a yellow card for repeated penalties. So the Reds were looking good. And then uh, the Blues scored more tries with 14 players in the field than the Reds with 15. In the last 10 minutes. Yes, that was really, really disappointing as uh, for the Reds. Because they were only about two... Only, I think there were two tries behind at that point. And with, you know, 10 minutes to go. Could easily, you know, catch up two tries. Uh, when you're playing against, a def, uh, you know, 14 players, right? And yeah, this once again this week. A big, big loss for the Reds going into the game. Is that James O'Connor, who was instrumental last week. Uh, at 12 jersey. Really, I was able to direct... Uh, the traffic showing a lot of leadership for the Reds. Uh, really control the game, manage the game for the Reds as well. And uh, yeah, and really, you know, gave a strong sense of direction of what the Reds wanted to do last week. Whereas this week, going uh, once again, the Reds didn't really look like what they, they know what they wanted to do when they kind of had the ball. It, it looked almost like the Reds were a bit too afraid to spread the ball out wide, especially when they're close to the trial line. They were just, you know, repeated forwards. Uh, pick and goes, and then you know players, uh, players like Vinavalu didn't really get touched the ball. I don't even think hardly touched the ball this game. Uh, there was a couple of really nice cross field kicks to, near the try line where the execution was just a little bit off. Where uh, people play, uh, the Reds players weren't able to catch that. Uh, but outside of those, you know, opportunities, the Reds was yeah really looked like they didn't really know. Uh, you know, those cross field kicks were following penalties, but they really didn't do anything uh, out wide without the penalty advantage for the Reds. So I thought that was a big loss without James O'Connor's vision uh, to, to kind of direct the ball out wide sooner when the opportunity presented uh, itself. Another thing was obviously an issue that has been ongoing for the Reds is defense. The Reds' defense has been pretty poor this season. And once again, this week, the defense was uh, atrocious at times. In fact, it was like, it was just, you're just literally like face planting yourself uh, watching this defensive line for the Reds. So the, the, uh, one of the Reds' assistant coaches was talking about this at halftime. He did talk about, you know, taking that three-step up really quickly to shut down the space for the Blues. And that kind of, like, worked against the Reds a little bit. I felt like after kind of hearing the comment and, you know, really trying to see what he's talking about in, in terms of execution for the Reds uh, on the field, and it really looked like there were a few players that was really kind of maybe, like, you know, been faster, maybe the loose forwards. They, they just get up really quickly and then leaving a gap between them and then essentially the slower, you know, props uh, behind them. So, so that's where a lot of the, the Blues were able to find space, where there was few players showed up way too quickly. And then there was, you know, obviously props were not able to go up as quick. Uh, and if they, if the if the quicker players going up, not able to make the tackle, uh, suddenly you have a gap between, between your defensive line. And that's where the Blues really uh, was able to find themselves a lot of space. Uh, and resulting in a lot of missed tackles for the Reds. So I don't know if that was the right call. I mean, if you're going to do the, the rush defense, everybody's going to kind of be like on the same speed. Uh, if you have players that's just physically and, you know, in terms of fitness level, they can't keep up that quick speed going up off the line, then yeah, you, you got to, you know, have a better communication between your players to kind of like ease up on that line speed. If people, are, if, you know, if the props can't keep up. So yeah, the, the, like, you know, Mark Talaya, this game for the Blues was just absolutely... Uh, Superman this game he, he was just untouchable at times he, and he looks so easy as well he just like he, he's like not even breathing he looks like he's just having a stroll in the park and just steps through you know two three defenders and just runs like 50 meters down the line it was just unbelievable how good this guy actually is uh, he, he's obviously extremely informed as well for the Blues uh, but just like the defensive line like, like the, the the way that the Blues defensive line was just not lined up properly really made it look way too easy for players in the caliber of Mark Talaya. Uh, Zang Sullivan played really well as well this game. Was able to uh, move into the 10 position. I think it was a 10. Bowden Barrett kind of had, had, a, had a bit of a heel injury. Achilles injury looked like it came off. So yeah, I was like, hey, Bowden Barrett's off. You know, uh, the Blues is really looking like, 
you know, without Bowden and Barry, you really could potentially suffer a bit. But um, yeah, no, not a, not a big issue for the for the Blues. Just having you know Zana Sullivan, uh, just doing what they've trained to do. And then the, the the big thing about the Blues is their four pack. The four pack were really physical, really dominant up front as well. So the Reds uh, four packs was you know the the, the Blues four packs was, was able to create a lot of form form momentum in attack and shut down a lot of that uh, Reds you know forward pick and drive game uh, when there was when it was the Reds' turn to to try to score. So the Blues defense uh, once again paid dividend for for themselves this week. Uh, so with that being said. Let's go through some of the key stats of the game. Uh, the Reds was pretty much on the receiving end for the game for the entire duration of the game. At uh, halftime, the Reds was only three points behind, 17 points to 14. And it was almost like, you know, they almost got lucky a little bit, it felt like, to, to walk away at halftime with only three points behind. And the um, the halftime attack, sorry, a tackle count for the Reds was 83. And they missed 17 already at halftime 17 missed tackles already at halftime the blues only missed four uh, out of 50 tackles made and the blues made 388 run meters at 100 uh, at half time uh, the reds only made 117 uh, for for themselves so full time the, the blues 692 run meters to the reds 334 uh 31 defenders beaten for the blues 10 turnovers turnovers considered for the blues 16 turnovers considered for the reds uh, in full time so the Reds only conceded I think what was it like five I think it was five or six very low uh, turnovers at half time so yeah they conceded way more turnovers in the second half uh, and, and that is due to the Blues forwards you really doing the work at the breakdowns creating those opportunities so the second half defense is slightly better for the Reds 31 missed tackles overall 134 tackles made still like not great the Blues 15 missed tackles out of 153 that is quite you know that is you know, like an A, you know, A great performance for the for the Blues. Tack kicks in play, sixteen and nineteen. Both teams played a lot fewer kickings in the first half. Both teams were around seven to eight kicks at, at half time. So I didn't even write it down because it's it's so low. It was like pretty yeah, like the kicking it wasn't really a big part of the game in the first half. But the second half, both teams kind of ramped up a little bit, especially when Bowden and Barrett kind of went off. The Blues really wanted to con control the territory. They want to play the game. Uh, set piece line out fifteen. To 16 uh zero lineouts lost i'm pretty sure the rest lost one line out so i don't think this stat is correct at least one line out there was uh there was one that was overthrown really close to the blues try line uh scrum seven and eight quite evenly matched uh once again the reds brought on fresh props you know 10 minutes before half you know, not 10 minutes but five minutes maybe before half time something that uh the reds did last week against the against the chiefs which paid paid off for them because the, the but that was because the Reds starting props was really struggling against the Chiefs. Whereas this week, it didn't look like the Reds props were struggling. Uh, but Brad Thorne thought, you know, since bringing in the props on early last week worked down for the Reds, uh, they brought on the props on again this week. And it did work out. Immediately, the, the Reds was able to score a try just before half time with, an, a, you know, the fresh legs from the four pack, uh, going for the line out moors, going for those pick and drives, got themselves through. So it did, did pay off. Uh, but yeah, before full time, one of the props was literally cramping and he wasn't able to run anymore. So yeah, the Reds hurt himself a little bit in that regards uh, where one of the props was literally, um, you know, burned out. Like his legs were cramping and he had to be taken off before uh, before, before the before uh, the game finished, essentially. Penalties considered pretty good for both sides. Seven against the Reds, 11 against the Blues. Actually considering more penalties. Uh, one yellow card against the Blues uh, for repeated penalties. In the second half, you know, like I said, the Reds really had an opportunity when the Blues went down to 14 players in the last 10 minutes or so. But yeah, the Blues was too too good. The Reds' defense was just not really, yeah, really, really disappointing. Uh, some of the key moments of the game. So right off the start, the two teams kind of went, like the Reds was like absorbed a lot of, uh, a lot of tackles in like the first, you know, 15 to 20 minutes. The, the Both teams were not able to score any points. Uh, all the way to 18 minutes into the game, the uh, the Blues got their first penalty with uh, I think there was like a basically like a seatbelt tackle against Bowden I think he was and Bowden Barrett kicks this one it was like a 45 meter kick it was quite a long kick for Bowden but it pops this one through uh, the Blues gets the first point almost 20 minutes into the game so 18 minutes right uh, and immediately after this point was kicked the Reds kind of fell asleep from the kickoff uh, immediately just like missed tackles everywhere. 
Uh, it, was, it was almost like they did really well for the first, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And they just kind of like, hey, that's that's good enough. Let's uh, let's take a break. Uh, and then, yeah, sure, sure enough, the Blues were in the, in the, in the gets themselves in the front foot. Uh, Bowden Barry gets the ball. Nice little short pinpoint accurate pass to um, to the Blues number five. Uh, Suafoa, who runs through a little gap, and then he links up with uh, Sullivan, Zan Sullivan, who was out wide, he just goes goes in immediately like that, just like that, miss tackle uh, on the uh, little miss miss read on the on the on the on the on the, uh, on the running line of of um, uh, of the of the lock. Uh, Sullivan goes in for the first try for the Blues, and immediately the Reds are down ten points for nil. Uh, but good news for the for the Reds, they fall back. A few minutes later, the Reds was able to get themselves into the Blues 22. Uh, the, there was a bit of a scramble in the one of the ball. The ball popped out, almost looked like it could have been a knock-on, but the ball kind of rolled backwards. Fraser and McRae quickly scoops out the ball, uh, passes it to, to Uru, who runs through a little bit of a gap, and then just before he gets tackled, quickly pops the ball out wide. Uh, Josh Fluke was there, he juggles the ball a little bit, uh, regathers it, and runs in for the try. The Blues were just completely off guard. The, the fact that the... Um, the, the back line was in a bit of a scramble, seeing this quick ball uh, going out to Fluke. And then, yeah, easy try for the Reds, coming back seven points to ten. Uh, and then the Blues get themselves get themselves back into the front four. Literally, once again, basically from the kickoff of the Reds, right after they scored, uh, the Blues was able to get themselves back into, into some, some, some pressure. And then they get themselves inside the Reds' 22. Mark Talea really made... You know, Dagunu look like he doesn't know how to play the game. Uh, Talaya, kind of, the ball kind of goes up after Talaya, and he just like casually, like extremely casually steps uh, Dagunu. He, like literally, Dagunu looked really. I, I, I mean, it, it shows how really how good Talaya actually is. But he really, he really made Dagunu look like he doesn't know how to play. Like he just casually stepped him, uh, wasn't even like half in the puck from him, and then runs casually to uh, kind of like through. Uh, what's his name? Crichton sweeps across to tackle him, and then just casually offloads the ball to uh, Bowden Barrett, I think he was. Yeah, to Bowden Barrett, and then goes in for the second try for the Blues. And suddenly, 17 points to 7, the Blues are up uh, going into halftime. Uh, just before halftime, like I mentioned, the Reds bring on the reserve props. Uh, they go for the lineout. They they got a penalty going for a line out. The, the, the line out actually gets stolen by the Blues. Uh, and then the, the Reds immediately manage to turn the ball over at the breakdown. So they get out a penalty. And I thought it was really good for the Reds at this point. Instead of going for the three points, uh, you know, because half time is approaching, they decided to pressure the line out again because with the fresh legs with the props, they go for the line out, they go for another, uh, another mall, and then just pick and go, pick and go uh, with just, you know, power. F- uh, Garcia crashes over for the. For Second try for the Reds. So halftime score 14 points to 17, despite under an immense amount of pressure. Uh, the Reds were hanging in there. Uh, so second half starts. Uh, once again, the Blues was looking just uh, unbelievably good. So the Reds actually came out with a bit of a, uh, was actually like, you know, with a lot of momentum, pounding the Blues try line, actually getting really close to try. And the ball gets turned over. Mark Talea gets the ball, right? He's 95 meters out. And then he just literally ran through half the Reds team. I don't even know how to describe this. this time. He, he literally like ran sideways, right? And went past like three players and then ran, um, and then kind of like turned at an angle, ran back the other way and then beat another two or three players. And then he ran straight down the center of the field. Uh, and then he like chipped the ball behind when the, when the fullback sweeps across. And then he just like, uh, and the Bowden Barrow runs down. He almost got the ball there, and the ball kind of bounced awkwardly for him. But yeah, uh, like, you know, 95 meter turnaround uh, because Talaya was able to break so many, like, not even break, avoid essentially so many players because the Reds' defensive line was just not, uh, not lined up properly. And then, yeah, and then uh, following this 95 meter sort of kick, uh, the Blues had a, a scrum, 5 meter scrum because it was the Reds who took over the try line. And then, yeah, the. The Bowden Barry actually comes off after this chase, pulled his Achilles. So yeah, um, the Blues gets the ball, spreads the ball out wide, a couple crash balls, gets him, got himself really close to the try line, and then yeah, uh, um, Tui Pelotu, uh, was Patrick Tui Pelotu with the help with his teammates pushing from behind, crash, uh, you know, moors himself over for the first try in the second half of the Blues. Starting on the scoreboard is 14 points to 24, the Blues starting pulling away. Uh, 
61 minutes into the game, the Blues are really doing a lot of hard work. Some basically gets themselves, again, just getting over the advantage with the physicality. They got inside the Reds 22 once again. Just really nice hands for the Blues team. Again, Zan Solomon was able to really crucial, gets the ball in the center field, takes out a, a crucial defender, still able to get the ball out. Uh, and then Bryce gets the ball, really quick ball again, straight out to the Blues outside center, who's actually replacing Rico. No, who was it? Was it Bryce? I think it was Plummer. Oh yeah, I think it was Plummer. Really quick ball to uh, Bryce Him, And then uh, Bryce Him goes in for the Blues. Um, second try in the second half. And suddenly the scoreboard, 20 nights to 14. Okay, so the Reds are really starting to look like they're running out of ideas at this point. 69 minutes into the game, there was um, the Reds was able to get themselves in a, a dominant position. They're chasing the game, two tries behind. Still, you know, achievable with about 10 minutes left. Uh, a repeat of penalties against the Blues. The Reds gets a, the, the Blues get, receives a yellow card. So then number 19. So suddenly the, the Reds is able to, you know, have a huge advantage you now with playing against 14 players. Uh, you know, with Bowden Barry off the field, you know, a lot of the Blues players are resting. Like, you know, Rico Yuani is not there. So, yeah, you're looking like, you know, the, the Reds actually have a chance. Uh, and then, oh, sure enough, they get this opportunity. They, they uh, from the yellow card, they could take a quick tap. They run with the ball. And then eventually, uh, Harry Wilson dunks the ball over for, for a try. Reds catches up 19 points to 29. They missed the kick, which is quite important here. So it could have been 21 to 9, 29. But they missed the kick, so the Reds still chasing the two tries to win the game. But with 10 minutes left, you are uh, against 14 players. You figure that the Reds will be, will, be able, will be able to potentially pull up this upset, right? Nope. Uh, Blues right from the kickoff. Zhang Sullivan breaks the, he makes a break down the sideline. Uh, and then immediately just looked like the Reds were scrambling. And then, yeah, offloads inside to Mark Talaya. Uh, just so easy. Um, did I miss the try for the Reds? Uh, anyway, after the Blues. Anyway, just runs down the sideline. Like, really easy. Nice offload to, uh, to, to Talaya. Talaya, once again, a bit of footwork. Uh, he, he looked like he wasn't even trying. Like, just runs in for, for, the, for, the, for the sixth try for the, for the Blues. Uh, suddenly the scoreboard has opened up 38 points to the 19. Just before full time, the uh, you, you know this was basically like you know this was could have been basically the nail in the coffin. The Reds will probably just chase for a bonus point. Uh, but yeah, the just before full time, the the um, sorry three minutes left before before full time, Reds get an opportunity uh, inside the Blues half. You know trying to get a consolation, trying to chase a bonus point. Just nice quick hands to. Uh, to um, last quick hands when they're in the 22 out wide fluke gets the ball you know lining hands out to campbell find himself in in a bit of a space and dunks the ball into the corner for the reds 26 points to 38 and then just you figure this might be it maybe the this reds might be able to get one one more try uh with about a minute left it's pretty much the end but no uh from the kickoff the reds kind of like got themselves inside of their own 22 Campbell, who just scored the try, was a 10 position. He tries the pass, and this was hilarious. The ball slips out of his hand just as he's trying to throw the pass. He completely, like it did not, like the ball just dropped straight down. Completely, you know, dro dro drops the ball, cold. And then um, Funaki sweeps up from the Blues and then goes in for the, for the try for just before full time. And final score, 45 points to 26. Yeah, um, really the Reds, Kind of lacked a little bit without James O'Connor. Uh, James O'Connor had suffered a concussion from against the against the um, against the Chiefs. Uh, I was surprised that he actually did suffer a concussion because last week he got taken off the field. I thought he looked fine. I didn't even know that he got hit in the head. Uh, but yeah, apparently he did have a concussion and he has mandatorily uh, has to be to take to, to take two weeks break. So yeah, um, disappointing for the Reds fan, but. Yeah, um, don't know what else to say, man. 45 points, 26. The defense is something that you definitely need to work on. With or without James O'Connor, uh, I was really disappointed to see that defensive line so, so, so bad uh, for the Reds. Anyway, let me know your thoughts, guys. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, do you agree with my assessments? Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow for more reviews. Cheers.